Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, a wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at OzarkFolkCenter.com. Hey folks, this is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week will be a special show because we're going to showcase the incredibly talented young musicians we have here at the Ozark Folk Center. Many of them are products of Stone County Music Roots, a unique program where we go into the local schools and teach traditional instruments and music to children from grades four and up. On the show, we'll hear the results of this remarkable program. I'm also going to take you down into the vault for a visit with Mark Jones to hear a stirring sacred harp song from long ago. And guest host Charlie Sandage will fill us in on the educational aspects of this Arkansas State Park. All that this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Several times each season here at the Ozark Folk Center, we present what we call a Next Generation Show, celebrating the talents of our youngest performers. Many have learned their musical skills in our Music Roots program, where we team up with the Mountain View School District to teach traditional music at school. Starting in fourth grade, students can elect to learn guitar, fiddle, banjo, mandolin, dulcimer, and auto harp, as well as singing and bass playing. While the Cobb Brothers never were part of this program, they did start playing on our music programs at an early age and we've watched them grow into fine bluegrass musicians. Here are the Cobb Brothers, with a little help on banjo by their friend Alex Hilliker, playing She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain. That was the Cobb Brothers with Alex Hilliker. Let's listen to a few more of their great tunes, along with some commentary about the Music Roots program from the Ozark Folk Center general manager, John Morrow. Music Roots is a fantastic opportunity for children starting in fourth grade in the Mountain View School District here in Mountain View, Arkansas, and also in Timbo and Fox, Arkansas at the Rural Special uh, Schools. 
Music Roots goes back to the basics as far as folk music is concerned, and we take uh, these young children and, and they are learning a traditional Ozark folk tunes on uh, traditional Ozark folk instruments like the fiddle, the mandolin, the banjo, the guitar, uh, the auto harp, the dulcimer. All of these are options for these kids, and it's a real blessing to see them uh, learn these instruments. Uh, this, this is a special partnership that's involving the Parks and Tourism Department of a state agency and multiple other volunteer programs along with the school district. It's very unique to, to have something like this. Ozark Folk Center State Park and Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism takes on a, a partnership role with several other entities here in Mountain View and abroad, the Committee of 100 and the Mountain View Bluegrass Association, as well as the Mountain View uh, School District uh, here in Stone County. We together have this Music Roots program, and the Folk Center's part of it is mostly uh, administrative. We, we deal a lot with uh, helping uh, do the contracts and getting the teachers uh, uh, set up and getting them paid uh, for all the hard work that they do with these children. I've got a 
with the roar of a lion, the breath of a mouse. Black on my hands, black on my shoes. fall asleep for the dreams that may come but when the walls cave in and cold fills my lungs if life is a blessing please let it be Someday God's light will bring these souls peace. Black on my hands, black on my shoes. Black on my heart from these coal mining blues. Ashes to dust with these coal mining blues. Mountain View in Stone County is a, a highlight for uh, uh, folk music in. Uh, the whole U.S. and throughout the world. It's a, a wonderful place to be, and these kids are right here at the hub of that activity. As they grow up through this program, they learn the background of these instruments and the tunes, and uh, they begin playing in their own groups and groups with each other and uh, the ensemble groups that are put together through the Music Roots program. And uh, many of them end up playing here on the stage and on the square and uh, throughout the town uh, at different venues and even throughout the, the whole U.S. Spin, I don't care if the gins won't dip 
just as long as you love me. So darling, let it rain, let it pour, let the cold north wind blow, just as long as you love me. Well, north or south, east or west, you know I will stand the test, just as long as you love me. Just as long as you love me So darling, let it rain, let it pour Let the cold north wind blow Just as long as you love me Well, the north or south, east or west You know I will stand the test Just as long as you love me Just as long as you love me Uh, we have several uh, great stories that have come out of the Music Roots program. Uh, Clancy Ferguson was uh, uh, one of our early uh, on uh, kids who came through the program. Emily Phillips uh, is part of, of the program. There's been multiple uh, students that have grown up now and are, are recording and are seasoned performers. Uh, uh, even at a quite young age, they're getting quite a lot of recognition. You've been listening to young Ozark Folk Center musicians, the Cobb Brothers, featuring Caleb Cobb on fiddle and guitar, Nathan Cobb on bass and guitar, Samuel Cobb on mandolin, and their friend Alex Hilliker on the five-string banjo. Let's take a short break, after which we'll be heading down to the vault to hear Mark Jones' favorite song of the week. This is Ozark Highlands Radio.
Let's take a trip down into the vaults and visit with Mark Jones, who takes care of all these recordings we've got over the years. Hey, Mark, are you down here? Yeah, Dave, how are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Well, that's good. You know, I've been thinking, a lot of the music we do here at the Folk Center is what you would call old-time Southern Mountain music. But there is a, an offshoot of old time that came from old time that everybody knows, of course, as bluegrass music. What have you got down here in the way of bluegrass? Well, Dave, I've got some stuff here. You know, bluegrass uh, actually originated with Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, those states like that. And a friend of mine, not too long ago, a friend of mine moved into this part of the country, and he was from North Carolina. And, boy, quite a guitar player. He was really good and sung a lot of real old-time bluegrass stuff. Who's that? Dave Leatherman. I remember Dave Leatherman as well. I used to see him play here a lot. That guy could break more strings than anybody I had ever seen. Uh, ain't that the truth? Every night he broke at least one D string on his guitar, sometimes a couple of strings. That's right. And sometimes he wouldn't do but two songs, so that's <laughs> about one string a song. But, you know, uh, this recording that I found, it's, it's old bluegrass gospel. And uh, I bet you know this song called Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Boy, that's pure bluegrass music right there, isn't it? I'll bet that was Walter Gosser singing high tenor on that. It was. Walter sung with him, and, uh, boy, he, he does a good job. I don't know where Dave is now, but he sure was a fine singer and guitar player. I remember him from, oh, probably 30 years ago. That's right. I What I think is Dave moved back to North Carolina. Well, I'll bet wherever he is, he's still picking music today. I bet he is. All right, well, look, thanks a lot, Mark. See you next week. Okay, Dave. We've been talking about the Music Roots program. Now let's hear some music from some of our students. One of the most exciting aspects of Music Roots is watching the kids put together their own string bands. This band, Twang, is made up of Anna Caldwell, Gabby Purvis, Mary Parker, Lillian McCool, and Lillian's mom, Crystal McCool, who's also their driver and figure of authority. Can you imagine trying to ride herd on a band made up of young girls? Here they are on stage at the Ozark Folk Center playing Ain't No Grave. Oh, 
put down yonder Gabriel Feet on the land and sea but Gabriel, don't you blow that trumpet Until you hear from me Oh, look out over yonder What do you think I see? See a band of angels And they're coming after me Cause there ain't no grave Scott Poole, owner of our local music store, is the guy who keeps our rather large collection of Music Roots loaner instruments up and running, or I guess I should say playing. I asked him where these instruments come from, and here's what he had to say. Oh gosh, all kinds of places, of course. You know, a lot of them come from, like the Committee of 100 uh, donated money from them to purchase uh, instruments for the, the program, or the, the Bluegrass Association will purchase new instruments for the program. But then... You know, just almost, you know, once or twice a month, somebody will come through the front door of the music store with some old guitar and or, or fiddle or mandolin and say, I'm not using this anymore. Can you put it into the program? And if it's a, you know, a, a lesser quality, lesser expensive instrument, we'll just put it into the, the, the pool of instruments that get that get doled out year by year and, and you know, the, the, the loaners. If it's um, a better quality instrument, we may we may hang on to it until we find that one student that has convinced us that they're in in it for a lifetime. Uh, those ones that you see this passion and this drive and their and their their learning curve is just taking off, and then we'll give that instrument to that student as a what we call a, a lifetimer uh, instrument, one that they they can keep and hold. The only stipulation we put on it, the only string that we attach is. If they decide at some point they're not going to play, we'll give it to another kid, so someone that will just pass it on. That's, no doubt. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is.
just a, a couple examples we're, of songs. We're what? doing old time. Uh, we start. We, we kind of focus on the old time Ozarks music, but it's uh-huh. American folk music. It's old Joe Clark and Angelina Baker and um, standard tune. Yeah, you know when when we, the very beginning students were teaching Twinkle Twinkle and just whatever. <clears throat> yes. You know, and from there they can take it anywhere they want yeah. to. Some of these <laughs> yeah. folk songs like. Uh, Whiskey for breakfast or Devil's Dream, they, you know, the, the kids get a little, free. sometimes the parents get a little bit scared oh, about yeah. the, the titles. Dale, you know, some of these yeah. songs are rough, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> we assure the parents at the beginning of the year that we're not teaching any devil worshiping uh-huh. or, or, or alcohol <laughs> consumption. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we try to support kids, you know, in whatever they mm. want to do, but... Uh, but in the parent meeting at the beginning of the year, I always assure the parents, you know, that, uh, you know, we do keep things religiously neutral and we're not, despite the, the titles of some of the songs, we're <laughs> yeah. not teaching them anything bad. Yeah. Very, very religious things and very unsavory. The, this was a very rough place. Um, I mean, people made moonshine to to survive, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, it's all, all of these things come out. Um, sometimes we have to... Uh, edit songs yeah. <laughs> before we give them to the kids. That was the Music Roots Ensemble Twang playing Ain't No Grave and Sally Gooden, along with interviews by Music Roots teachers Kathy Jensen and Roger Fountain. Another of our young musicians that we're so proud of is Grace Stormont. Many evenings during our concerts, I see her sitting backstage soaking up the old-time music. In just a few short years, Grace has mastered guitar and clawhammer banjo and is a powerful singer as well. Here she is singing... Bring it with you when you come. Playing around this little town, smoking those nice cigars. Waiting for a handout just to catch an empty car. Just as a freight train came rolling by, my wait was all in vain. Back off, back off, you dirty bum, and catch yourself the next free train. So if you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with you when you come. Town, your head chuck full of rum. I came downtown for the little sap boy, which she ain't sitting on another man's lap. If you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with me when you come. Well, they put me up in Texas, a place that I do love. Wide open spaces around me, the moon and the stars above. Nobody seems to want me now or let me no helping hand. I'm on my way, I'm living the day, I'm headed for the promised land. So if you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with you when you come. Playing around this little town, your head chock full of rum. I came downtown for the little sap boy, which she ain't sitting on another man's lap. If you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with you when you come. If you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with you when you come. Playing around this little town, your head chock full of rum. I came downtown for the little sap boy, but she ain't sitting on another man's lap. If you want to be a little friend of mine, bring it with you when you But I saw that uh, they dropped out of music roots at a certain point, about sixth grade, maybe eighth, and they never went anywhere with it. So I came up with the idea of we should start developing some bands. And to do that, we needed a class to teach children how to play together in hopes that they'd come play on the square or maybe hopefully play a, try out for the Folk Center and make the Folk Center. So we started our first ensemble class, I guess it was about four years ago. And for the first year that worked great, we added um, one for every class. And when I was teaching fiddle and banjo, and we always had one student that always just stuck out and they were passionate. That's all they could do was talk about their instrument or play. And they were so far above everybody else that they would go to a corner and practice by themselves because the rest of the class was not even close to their level. So this ensemble kind of solved the problem of what would we do with the students the next year when we had all these beginners who knew one or two songs and then we had this upper student who knew 30 songs. And by putting them in the ensemble class, we were able to just further their education and not let them 
burn out and quit. But since then, we've we have I don't know how many bands. I think this year we had about 22 kids hired in bands, or maybe more. That I don't remember. We counted up at one time. We had close to 40 kids at the Folk Center now. That was Shea Poole, who's worked tirelessly as a music roots teacher since its inception back in 1999. Now let's hear from another band of youngsters. This one made up entirely of brothers and sisters of the Brewer family, aptly named Sibling Rivalry. That was the family band, Sibling Rivalry, playing an old fiddle tune, John Brown's Dream. After the break, we'll hear from Charlie Sandage about the educational aspects of the Ozark Folk Center. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Generations of young people have learned Ozark traditional music through the Ozark Folk Center and in Stone County School District's Music Roots program. Craftspeople, young and old, have come to the center and to the Arkansas Craft School in Mountain View to become practitioners of traditional arts and crafts. But even for the casual visitor, as Park Superintendent John Morrow explains, learning is built into the center's DNA. Ozark Folk Center State Park was created on uh, the premise that people would be taking away something from here, uh, something that was very meaningful, a part of the culture that was being preserved and presented. The culture here is a living one and one that is consistently being shared. We want our craftsmen, our musicians to communicate that with the audience. You're going to come here, you're going to have a good time, you're going to see some things that are, are specifically interesting, but you should be also walking away with a feeling of what the Ozark culture is all about and what we are as a people here. Visitors to the center literally choose their own path starting as soon as they enter the craft grounds. They can browse quickly through 20 separate shops or they can stay for as long as they like with the herbalist or the blacksmith, the quilt maker or the gunsmith. According to Morrow, it's your choice. The level of experience the visitor can have here is really up to them. There is specific interpretation that takes place on the craft village and in the music auditorium and through the different programs every day. 
how deep a visitor wants to delve into the interpretive elements is really an option for them to explore. They can spend their time talking with the craftsman, or they can return and do a craft program, or they can do a craft workshop, they can do a music workshop. There's so many different elements that allow them to get deeper in what we're presenting here in, in, at the Ozark Folk Center. Many visitors simply take home memories of a pleasant experience. Others leave with new insights and attitudes. Some, like Linda Odom, who can be found making soaps, lotions, and balms, started as a visitor who returned to sample a variety of workshops and eventually became a master interpreter and teacher. Um, attended several workshops and several folk schools here at the Folk Center. I uh, started in 2004, I believe, doing folk schools, and my very first one was um, beginning for harness weaving. Linda now teaches workshops and helps with organizing them, including sessions offered as part of the three times each season event called Folk School. In folk school, we go from, again, spinning and weaving, you know, all kinds of fiber arts to um, uh, broom making, uh, candle making. Um, basically, any craft that you see on the craft grounds, you know, you get the opportunity to actually not just learn things in theory, but actually do things and go home with a finished product. The music side of the equation is also expressed in organized workshops at the Folk Center and in the Music Roots program. But for most visitors, learning traditional music here is organic. Darren Dorton is the center's music director. So a visitor to the Ozark Folk Center State Park, one of the first things they'll notice is we've got music everywhere. Uh, we have it in the craft grounds during the daytime. We have it uh, in the music theater at night. If they're spending some time in Mountain View or the surrounding community, they'll notice it on the court square. Uh, they'll notice there's so many things that revolve around music here at the Folk Center and in this region. Somebody who might just be coming here as a casual uh, visitor, uh, they might find that uh, there's an opportunity to ask questions, where did this song come from? You know, how did you learn to play like that? What about this song? We always have what's called a, a shake and howdy session um, after the evening concerts here. So visitors get a chance uh, to spend some time with the musicians and interact with them that way. The center's annual schedule, which is found on its website, is dotted with music workshops, each one focusing on some traditional instrument or style. Uh, our workshop season kicks off in April. We have the Dulcimer Jamboree, which is a very popular event. It's been going on here uh, over 30 years. The format of that workshop is kind of a round robin format where all the teachers have classes at different levels of play. So somebody who comes for the Dulcimer Jamboree, and if they're a beginner level player, they would get to take a beginner level course with all of the instructors who are here. So it gives people a great opportunity to learn different techniques and skills at their level of play with all the different instructors. The workshops, most of them three-day events embracing a weekend and several including competitions, which draw nationally recognized players, continue with thumbstyle guitar, banjo, coinciding with events honoring our memory of Grandpa Jones, auto harp, and fiddle, with a contest in both strictly traditional and modern style fiddling. In every workshop, participants can learn at their own level and listen to and get acquainted with master players. A shape note singing event has been added in recent years. Each of the workshops, we try to have a nice blend of local instructors as well as folks who are nationally known uh, in their field. So. By bringing in nationally known folks, sometimes, for lack of a better word, more contemporary practitioners of some of these traditional instruments, and blending that with local folks, 
Uh, it's a nice mix, so f- people can learn about what's out there sort of on the cutting edge of whatever instrument they're studying, but also can take some steps back and really get to the roots uh, of the matter as it relates to what goes on here. Participants in the nationally known Rhodes Scholar Program will find a specially designed experience waiting at the Ozark Folk Center. And Crafts Director Jeanette Larson says that one-on-one sessions with Crafts people can be set up most any time with just a phone call. She went on to offer some observations about the center and its surrounding community as a place of learning. This is a place to learn how to learn. This whole community encourages creativity, encourages curiosity, and it encourages it in a group way. People pick up an instrument and are intrigued by it and they'll take lessons, but they probably won't have six lessons before they're being encouraged to play with another couple people. And I see the same thing in our crafts. It's an incredible creative environment with so many different possibilities and it just encourages people to to learn and think and open up their mind to travel into those possibilities. They now have a new way of looking at things, maybe a new way to figure out problems that they didn't have before. You sit down with a, you know, a chisel and a chunk of wood and you have to figure out how to make a bowl out of it. You spend a week and you actually make a beautiful bowl. You suddenly feel empowered because you made something and you have that piece that you made that you took with you to remind you that you can do something beautiful and you made it yourself and you had to work out how to do it with the help of somebody. And then you can go back and you can drive into work and open your email and you have a new way to look at these problems that are suddenly there in your inbox. No show about young entertainers at the Ozark Folk Center would be complete without mention of Clancy Ferguson. Clancy's been playing here since she was a little girl, and we've proudly watched her grow into one of the finest bluegrass fiddlers around. Here she is with three hot and, tunes. Uh, my, I learned this from my cousin, Pam Setzer. Those of you that have seen some of the local shows have seen her with the Leatherwoods, as well as right here at the Ozark Folk Center. And um, this is actually one that Bill Monroe used to uh, it was his theme song. He uh, kicked off the Grand Ole Opry every show with this song. Mm-hmm. It's called Watermelon Hanging on the Vine. Oh, Well, I snuck out last night. I thought I'd have some fun. 
the stars had just begun to shine. But I heard some rustling, I took off on the ground. But I did leave that melon on that vine. Oh, ham on the grave, it's your girl, it's good. Rabbit is so very, very fine. But give me all, give me all, I wish you would. That watermelon hanging on that vine. Well, that watermelon, a watermelon, a watermelon. Uh, there's all all kinds of learning studies done on the the benefits of, of learning music as a as a youngster and what it does to the neural pathways in your brain and what it does to your attention span and your 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 uh, just dedication towards a craft and you know all of that makes a difference in the long run but is it that those kids just gravitate towards it I don't know that's a, that's a tough call yeah. you know we, we'll get two to three hundred kids a year starting the program and of course you know a certain number of those are going to find out that it really is work and your fingers do get sore and they'll just, you know a few will drop out but uh but still when you get that many kids in a pool you're going to get some some cream rise to the top yeah. and and you're right we're getting some amazing little students out of this thing yeah. It definitely makes you smarter. <laughs> Music definitely makes you smarter. I can see in my students alone the confidence, the change in confidence from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And they're, they just carry themselves in a different way. And, um, you know, persistence, learning how to keep on trying even though it's hard. Right.
That was young bluegrass fiddler and singer Clancy Ferguson playing Watermelon on the Vine, Kansas City Kitty, and Bluegrass in the Backwoods, plus some commentary by Shea and Scott Poole about the importance of music in young people's nurturing. I sure hope you've enjoyed our special show this week, featuring some of the younger performers here at the Ozark Folk Center State Park. For more information about us, check out our website at ozarkhighlandsradio.com. Click on the Contact Us tab if you have any questions or comments. For Ozark Highlands Radio, I'm Dave Smith. See you next week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from the Committee of 100, proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. More information online at arkansasstateparks.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at ozarkhighlandsradio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.